I'm Adam Harriton, and in this video I'd like to take you around and show you some edible mushrooms that I think you'll enjoy seeing and learning. So it's definitely getting colder. You can tell I've got my jacket on. Most of the deciduous trees have dropped their leaves for the year, though there are some oak trees and beech trees that are still holding on. But it seems that most of the foliage now is being restricted to the conifer-rich areas. And that's where I am right now. I'm in a conifer-rich area, specifically a pine plantation. And I'm in a pine plantation because there's a particular group of mushrooms that can reliably be found mid to late autumn when it's getting colder outside. And so we've had some rain the past couple of days and past couple of weeks. So rather than just walking around the forest anywhere hoping to find any kind of edible mushroom, I thought I'd come specifically to a pine plantation to see if this particular group of mushrooms can be found. So which group of mushrooms am I talking about? Take a walk with me and hopefully we'll find some. Okay, so here in the pine plantation, I'm seeing all different kinds of pine trees, including white pine trees, red pines, and Virginia pines. I'm also seeing some spruce trees and some larch trees, but most of the trees around here are living pine trees. It might seem like they're dead because you don't see any foliage down below, but most of the foliage is up top because these pine trees are very shade intolerant. And the particular group of mushrooms that I'm looking for in this pine plantation this time of year, so mid-autumn when the temperatures are dropping, would be members of the Suillus genus. Now, Suillus mushrooms are considered to be bolete mushrooms, and these particular bolete mushrooms generally have slimy or sticky caps. And so they tend to attract a lot of pine debris and a lot of leaf litter. They'll just be stuck to the caps. Now, there are exceptions. There are some Suillus mushrooms that have dry, cottony caps, but most of the Suillus mushrooms, at least the ones that I find around here in western Pennsylvania this time of year, tend to have these slimy or sticky caps. Now on the underside of these caps, most Suillus mushrooms have a yellowish pore surface. Many Suillus mushrooms have a partial veil that covers the pore surface when the mushroom is immature, then that partial veil breaks to leave a ring zone or an onulus around the stem. And many Suillus mushrooms have resinous dots on the stem. Now there are about 100 species of Suillus mushrooms worldwide. And whenever you find a mushroom that fits those characteristics that I just described, it's very easy to put a mushroom in the Suillus genus just by looking at it, but putting a species name on it is a different game altogether. It can be quite difficult to identify many Suillus mushrooms to the species level. Now most Suillus mushrooms are mycorrhizal, and they form mycorrhizal connections specifically with conifer trees, and more specifically with members of the pine genus, also larch trees and fir trees, though exceptions do exist because some Suillus mushrooms grow in association with aspen trees and also oak trees. Now we briefly described mycorrhizal fungi in the previous video on the hottest mushroom in the forest. In case you missed that video or in case you need a refresher, we'll briefly describe it again. So mycorrhizal literally means fungus root and mycorrhizal fungi form mutualistic symbiotic connections with most vascular plants. Both plant and fungal partners benefit through this association. The fungus is able to send over to the plant nitrogen and phosphorus and other nutrients, also water, and in turn the fungus receives photosynthetically derived plant carbohydrates. Also by forming this symbiotic connection, the plant is also able to receive enhanced resistance to stresses, including heavy metal toxicity, to drought, to plant pathogens, and also changes in the pH and salinity of the soil. So with that background on Suillus mushrooms, let's actually go see if we can find some of these slimy, sticky wild fungi. Okay, so we found our first Suillus mushrooms of the day, and this is a good one. This is a good edible Suillus mushroom. You can see how slimy and sticky this is. Look at all the pine needles on there. There's some deer berry leaves on there as well. So it definitely fits the bill of a Suillus mushroom. There's one over here, one right here, one back there. There's a couple more scattered throughout here. So which Suillus mushroom is this? Well, this is the slippery jack mushroom, Suillus luteus. And luteus means yellow and it refers to the yellow context of this mushroom. Whenever you cut it in half, you'll see that for the most part it's yellow, though some specimens aren't that yellow. Now Suillus luteus is one of the easiest Suillus mushrooms to identify. 
The slimy, sticky mushroom has a brownish cap. On the underside, you will see a yellow pore surface. And then whenever you look at the stalk, there are some very distinct features of this stalk. You will see that on the top portion of the stalk, there are resinous dots, and you will see a ring, or a ring zone, or a sheathing ring around this stalk. And this ring does cover the pore surface when the mushroom is immature, then it breaks to leave this ring zone around the stem. Not only is there a ring, but it's a purplish brownish ring. Not too many other Swillus mushrooms have these features. So if you see a Swillus mushroom that fits all these features, there's a good chance it's Swillus luteus. I tend to find Swillus luteus with two needled pine trees. This pine tree right here is a two needled pine tree. Which pine tree is this? Well, this is a red pine tree and red pine trees have two needles per bundle or fascicle. Now, Suillus luteus, the slippery jack mushroom, is one of the more commonly collected Suillus mushrooms for the table. It's a good edible mushroom. I like this mushroom. Whenever I find a bunch, I tend to harvest a couple and cook them up. Now, there are some things you should know about this mushroom before doing that. Some people have issues with Suillus mushrooms. We've talked about some of these issues in previous videos. Now, this slimy, sticky nature of this cap is due to the cap cuticle. It's the outermost layer of the cap. If you don't remove that, it can cause gastrointestinal disturbances and can also cause diarrhea in many individuals. So it's not just a couple individuals. I've spoken with a couple individuals who can't consume the cap cuticle, and you read online reports of people getting sick consuming a lot of the cap cuticle. If you just have one mushroom and you cook it, you'll probably be fine, but some people just can't tolerate a lot of it. So it's very easy to remove. You can remove it with your fingernail, or you can remove it with a knife. And if it's your first time consuming any Suillus mushroom, definitely cook it, and I would recommend removing this cap cuticle. Another thing you can do is remove the tubes, or this pore surface on the bottom. You can remove it with your fingers, or you can scrape it off with a knife. If you do both of those, you can probably ensure that you won't experience any gastrointestinal symptoms when consuming this mushroom. And again, there are reports online of people getting sick, getting GI disturbances, also getting diarrhea from consuming a lot of the cap cuticle. That seems to be the bigger issue. If you don't remove the tubes, it might be all right, especially in younger specimens because the tube layer isn't that big. Once this mushroom gets older, it tends to get very, very spongy on the underside. I tend to remove that. I also remove the stalks before cooking this mushroom. They tend to be a little too fibrous. Another issue with Suillus mushrooms, we mentioned this in the Mushroom Myths video, is that they can cause dermatitis in some sensitive individuals. So because of the slimy, sticky nature of the cap cuticle, some sensitive individuals develop symptoms like swelling and itching and reddening of the skin. But I can touch it just fine and I don't develop these symptoms. I don't know anybody personally who does develop these symptoms, but some people do and it's reported in the literature that it can cause dermatitis. So just be careful before you do harvest a lot of these mushrooms if you're one of those sensitive individuals. Other than that, if you bring it home, you take all those special precautions, especially if it's your first time, you can probably ensure that you will have a good meal of Suillus mushrooms, particularly Suillus luteus, the slippery jack mushroom. Let's go see if we can find other Suillus mushrooms in this forest. Okay, so I'm in a slightly different area right now. I moved away from the red pine trees. All I'm seeing right around here are eastern white pine trees. So that bigger tree back there, and I say bigger because it's all relatively speaking, that's probably 40 years or younger. But that's an eastern white pine tree. It has leaves or needles born in bundles or fascicles of five. So the fungal and plant community is actually a little different compared to the fungal and plant community over there with the red pine. So I'm seeing a lot of gallerina mushrooms popping up out of these mosses right here, these brown cap species. These are gallerina mushrooms. I'm seeing a lot of polytrica mosses. I'm seeing some sphagna mosses all different kinds of mushrooms. I'm not seeing any Suillus luteus, the slippery jack mushroom. What I'm seeing though is this Suillus mushroom right here. Do you see all these slimy, sticky mushrooms? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, just in this particular area. As I walk around, there's undoubtedly more of these mushrooms. So it's slimy, it's sticky, it's growing in a pine-rich area, it's the fall. Good chance this is a Swillus mushroom, and indeed, this is a Swillus mushroom. So I have two right here. You can just see how this debris just sticks to the caps of these mushrooms. So which Swillus mushroom is this? Well, this is the appropriately titled Swillus acidus, or the sour cap Swillus. And I'll get to the sour capness of this mushroom in just a couple of seconds. This one's actually quite easy to identify. So it's a lighter shade of brown on the cap 
compared to Suilus luteus. Though in older specimens, you will see that the color is relatively the same, but especially in this younger specimen right here, you can see that it's almost like a creamish, tannish, brownish color. And there are key features in the stalk of this mushroom, just like there are key features on Suilus luteus. So you look at the stalk and you see these brownish smears, these resinous dots all up and down the stalk of this mushroom. Another feature of this stalk is that it's rather durable. So if you snap this stalk, it'll snap almost like you're breaking a twig, and it'll be loud like that as well. With Suilus luteus, it's much more spongier. It's a thicker stalk that doesn't really snap, almost like you're cracking a knuckle on your hand. Also, when you look at this mushroom, Suilus acidus, you see that there is a partial veil. It's very prominent in the younger specimens. You'll see that it covers the pore surface. It's whitish, it's tannish, and it breaks to leave a persistent ring or a ring zone around the stem. So as I look at this, you can see the younger specimen right here. You can see the partial veil up there encircling the stalk. Then you can see it's still there, this remnant encircling the stalk on this older specimen. So this is Suilus acidus, the sour cap Suilus. Now why do they call it the sour cap Suilus? because the cap tastes sour. Now other Suilus mushrooms will have a sour cap, but this one is probably the most sour that I've ever tasted. And it's the cap cuticle that has that sourness. How do you get that sensation? Well, you simply just taste it. So if you nibble on a piece, and I'll actually just pull up a specimen over here, and you can see all the debris that comes up along with it. You just nibble on it. And it's safe to do this, and you nibble for a couple seconds. And you get this acidic flavor, the sourness to it. Much more sour than Suilus luteus, much more sour than other Suilus species. This is one of the most sour capped mushrooms in the Suilus genus. And because it's a raw, wild mushroom, make sure you do spit it out. This mushroom is edible. Just like Suilus luteus, this is edible. However, this one's not as highly regarded as Suilus luteus, but you can still bring this home and you can prepare it in all the same ways that I mentioned that you can prepare Suilus luteus, meaning peel the cap cuticle, you could try to remove the tubes of the pore surface as well, and I remove the stalk because it is very, very fibrous. It just snaps almost like you're breaking a twig. Now, I didn't mention this for Suilus luteus, but another way to prepare Suilus mushrooms, you can dehydrate them, then rehydrate them. They seem to lose some of that sliminess associated with Suilus mushrooms. And what I like to do first is remove the cap cuticle if I can and remove the tube layer on the pore surface before dehydrating them. You can store them in a jar and then rehydrate at a later date and still cook them before consuming. Also, some people really enjoy pickling Suilus mushrooms. That's another thing that you can do with Suilus mushrooms. So Suilus acidus, the sour cap Suilus mushroom, there's a lot of it around here growing in association with this eastern white pine tree. Let's see if there are any more Suilus mushrooms growing in this pine plantation. Okay, so I have another Suilus mushroom to show you. I moved a little away from that particular area. You can see that it looks a little different. The whole forest floor now is just covered with pine needles. But all of these trees here, almost without exception, are eastern white pine trees. So there's a Suilus mushroom in this area that grows exclusively in association with eastern white pine trees, or at least I always find it growing in association with eastern white pine trees. So which mushroom am I talking about? Well, if you kind of pull away some of this leaf litter, some of this moss right here, you can see these little mushrooms just budding up. So it's early November and there's still fresh mycorrhizal mushrooms popping up because the temperature is still mild. The ground hasn't frozen yet, and we're still receiving some rainfall. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I don't know if this is in the shot, but there's one back here. There's a couple more scattered throughout here. And I'm holding one right here. And again, Suilus mushroom, you can see how slimy and sticky this is. You can see the pine debris stuck to the cap of this mushroom. So which Suilus mushroom is this? Well, this is the appropriately titled Dotted Stock Suilus. And it's not easy to put a species name to it. Most people call this Suilus granulatus. If you read many field guides that contain Suilus mushrooms, most people are going to call this Suilus granulatus. But that might be strictly a European name. There's a strong push in the past couple of years to call this something else, which is Suilus weaveray. And it seems that Suilus weaveray might be the North American version of Suilus granulatus. But the jury's still out. Nobody really knows exactly what to call this. But most people these days, if they want to be accurate, will call this part of the Suilus granulatus group or Suilus weaveray. So, 
This mushroom has a cap cuticle that's very slimy and sticky, so before eating it, you might want to remove it. It's a medium shade of brown. When you look at the underside, you'll see that the pore surface is light yellow at first. It darkens with age. The key feature for this mushroom is that there's no partial veil, at least in this Suillus granulatus mushroom that I find. And I'm putting granulatus in quotes, might be weaver but I never find a partial veil in association with this particular species. But what I do see are little dots near the apex of the stalk. It's almost always at the apex of the stalk. Sometimes it goes a little farther down than that. That's why they call this mushroom the dotted stalk suillus. Now one more thing I want to mention about suillus mushrooms is that you definitely want to look for the younger, fresher specimens for at least two reasons. As these mushrooms age, they tend to get buggy, at least in the summer months, maybe not necessarily in the autumn months because it's getting colder. There's not as many insects out as there would be during the summer months. Also, they tend to decompose. And so this is a nice young specimen right here. All these ones right here are perfect for harvesting. This one right here just pulls up really easily out of the soil. You can see not really damaged in any way, but here's an older one right here. Now look at some of this rotten tissue right here. You might get sick consuming a lot of this. The pores have opened up. It's way more angular compared to this younger specimen right here. So I would leave these older ones behind because you could get sick harvesting these ones and eating these ones but these ones are perfect for the table. So that applies to pretty much any wild mushroom that you find. I tend to look for the younger, fresher specimens. Of course, there are exceptions, but specifically with suillus mushrooms, so that you don't get sick consuming them, just look for the youngest specimens, the ones that are intact to a very, very large degree. So suillus granulatus, this mushroom just doesn't grow this time of year in the autumn months. I found this as early as late May, many years ago, and it tends to grow throughout the summer months. This one grows summer through fall, but there is a resurgence again in the fall months whenever you start to get rains before the ground freezes. Suillus granulatus or Suillus weaver A, depending on whatever you want to call it, the dotted stock Suillus. Okay, so we found quite a few of these wild, slimy, and sticky edible mushrooms in the Suillus genus. We found the slippery jack. Suillus luteus, we found the sour cap Suillus, which is Suillus acidus, and we found the dotted stalk Suillus, which is a member of the Suillus granulatus group. Here in North America, we can tentatively call it Suillus weaverae. I'm sure if I looked around a little harder, I probably could have found a few more species, but I'm happy with the ones that I did find. And if you're interested in finding Suillus mushrooms, I encourage you to get out, look in con for rich woods this time of year, autumn months, that you can technically find Swillus mushrooms even during the summer months so long as there's adequate rainfall. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed it and you're not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, feel free to do that. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter so we can stay in touch. You can also follow me on social media at Learn Your Land on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.